So um, for everybody, this is Tracy Cohen and, and Tracy, welcome and thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me very much and thank you. I, I, I can't see you all, um, but thank you to everyone um, who has gotten up, especially, I know it's earlier there than, than here, um, to, to listen to, um, to my presentation. Um, so um, just briefly um, about myself. Um, I was born on the autism spectrum um, but my family, um, nor myself, um, even knew autism existed um, until I was 30. Um, there's a little bit of a story in itself of that, but I, I won't spend time on that today. Um, but um, it, was, it was a pretty big process, and um, I, was, uh, I, was, I did a lot of research and, and learning, and things just really added up um, and I was, um, I got my diagnosis when I was 39. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, um, I will be 50 this year. So um, as I would think that you all can imagine, um, you know, not having any knowledge um, of what was going on, um, life growing up um, is pretty difficult. Um, I grew up, um, there are lots and lots of misunderstandings and um, fighting and um, I grew up feeling um, not only unliked but um, unloved, um, unsupported. Um, I felt alone, confused, scared, um, you know, you, you name it. Um, it was, um, it was very difficult. Um, you know, especially in the early years, but, um, you know, life is just, um, just is a challenge. Um, but receiving my, um, learning about autism and receiving my diagnosis um, has definitely, definitely helped. Um, I kind of like to say that knowledge is power, um, whether you have a diagnosis or not. Um, I believe strongly in, in learning and knowledge. Um, but with, with all the misunderstandings, um, I actually was, uh, was sent to an institution um, when I was around 11. Um, that was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, very, very scary, um, very difficult. Um, and that was, um, I spent um, in total a little over two years in an institution. Um, but despite that, um, and I, uh, despite missing my um, my first year of, of high school, I, I did have school while I was in the institution, but um, it, it was different. Um, but anyway, I, I did make it um, make it through school. Um, I earned a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology from the University of Michigan um, in Ann Arbor, um, and also a K through 12 teaching certificate. Um, and I, I started um, teaching um, early childhood on um, just the lower ratios and um, younger age groups just really um, appealed to me. And um, I've pretty much always been in education. I've taught in private homes. Um, I've taught in schools. Um, I was in the Peace Corps from 2003 to 2005. And um, I was what was called a PACE volunteer, Parents and Communities for Education. Um, and I didn't take over a classroom, but um, I did different forms of education in, in the Peace Corps. And um, I've done a lot of things in my life for a lot of different reasons. Um, when I got back from the Peace Corps, um, there were some family health issues that I needed to support. Um, and so, that I've kind of, you know, had to reinvent myself, rebuild my my life kind of um, around it a, a number of times. But um, I've worked in um, run specialty, I've taught running classes, um, and I actually kind of fell into writing. Um, that's another story. But when I was in the Peace Corps, and um, I've um, I do, I freelance for newspapers and magazines, and, um, obviously I've, um, I've now written three books, um, 
uh, which was never something that I planned. Um, but I think you saw on your screen, but my, my first one was six word lessons on female Asperger syndrome, a hundred lessons to uh, understand and support girls and women with Asperger's. Um, my second book is six word lessons on the sport of running, a hundred lessons to enjoy running for a lifetime. And my newest book, um, which I uh, published um, in August of, um, of last year, um, is My Life on the Autism Spectrum, Misunderstandings, Insight, and Growth. Um, uh, so anyway, those, um, uh, and I, I also do um, obviously a lot of speaking now and, um, I, uh, those, you know, including being an author are some of the um, accomplishments that, that I've made that um, I feel, um, I feel very, you know, I, I take humble pride in it. Um, one of the biggest honors of my life was um, in 2017, um, I was awarded the Individual Courage Award by the Ten Ted Lindsay Foundation. Um, and what that means is every year, the Ted Lindsay Foundation, they recognize one person diagnosed with autism who they feel demonstrate great character and perseverance um, living with the challenges of autism. And um, I, I mean, it just floored me when I was um, when I was nominated and then to win, it was just um, completely unexpected and truly one of the greatest honors of, of my life. Um, and I also take um, a lot of pride in my running, which is um, something that's been a part of me for um, a very long time. It was, again, another story, um, but uh, it's something that I was ironically introduced to when I was in the institution um, when I was 11. And um, if anything good came out of that experience, um, it was... Um, learning about running and that, you know, running is a sport unto itself. Um, and just, you know, to, to mention that again, when I was in the institution, um, they didn't, um, they didn't suspect, um, I, I certainly wasn't diagnosed and, um, they didn't even, even suspect it. Um, but anyway, um, I've been running for, um, you know, basically my entire life and, um, made some accomplishments in a lot of ways, but um, I love all the distances and all the surfaces. Um, and, uh, but I have, um, I've also run um, 79 races of marathon or longer. And if you don't know what a marathon is, it's uh, 26.2 miles. And um, beyond that, beyond 26.2 miles is um, an ultra marathon. And so I've done, 79 in total, um, two Boston marathons, and 300 mile races. Um, so I want to um, get to the, the, the lessons um, that I'll be presenting, but before I do that, um, I just want to explain um, a little bit of the format of my book. Um, actually, it's the format of both the running book um, and Six Word Lessons on Female Asperger Syndrome. Um, I wanted to write something um, that was very informational, um, but concise, um, because as we all know, people's attention spans um, aren't, aren't the longest, um, especially for, um, you know, for something that maybe um, they you know, are just learning about, um, don't want to read an encyclopedia. So anyway, um, my book is, um, it's comprised of 100 lessons broken up into 10 chapters. Um, each chapter title is six words, each lesson title is six words, and each lesson is followed by a 40 to 60 word description with uh, resources at the back. Um, okay, so um, for the, the first, um, the first lesson, lesson number one, um, is do not discount a parent's intuition. And I'm going to read the lesson and then I'll read the description and expand on it a little bit. A parent's sixth, sixth sense should never be ignored. 
Early on, my mother knew there was something not right with me, but professionals and family members trivialized her concerns. Unable to help me with early intervention, she has supported me through the years and played an integral, integral, integral role in my diagnosis process. Advocate for your child and trust your instincts unwaveringly. Um, not only um, you know, did they kind of trivial, trivialize her concerns, um, but they also told her that she was a bad mother um, and that I was a brat even as an infant. Um, so you can imagine how, how she felt and neither were true. Um, she's you know, not only a wonderful mother, but a, a wonderful person. And um, I'm a lot of things, but um, I certainly never was a brat, never intending to be. Um, but besides a, a parent's in, intuition, for those of you who um, are on the spectrum, spectrum. Trust your own intuition. Um, you know yourself best. Um, and, you know, if you, if you feel you don't, um, and, and we're all a learning process, um, you know, we're constantly learning um, about ourselves. Um, but I find that um, if I truly kind of tap into myself and um, listen to my gut, um, I find that I make the, the right decisions. Um, and, you know, even when I have doubters, which, which is often, um, you know, I, my, my, my intuition has pretty much um, sticks with me. So, um, you know, be, be proud of, of who you are and, um, you know, keep learning. And, um, you know, if you make mistakes, well, that's, that's how we learn. Um, don't ever let somebody say, I told you so. Um, so I know it's hard, um, or at least it's, it's been very hard for me, um, but, but believe in yourselves. Um, okay, so the next lesson, um, which is lesson number five, we are literal to a fault. Ask me say what they mean and mean what they say. A 3 p.m. meeting does not mean 4 p.m. or even 3.15 p.m. We become agitated and confused when what we are told does not match reality. It has taken me a long time to realize that I must allow for these, these discrepancies in order to function in our, neurotyp in our neurotypical dominated world. So this is still something that um, I, I struggle with um, a lot, uh, but you know, having um, experience and kind of knowing a little better what to expect that um, you know, when somebody says that they're gonna get back to me tomorrow or they're gonna call me or they're going to meet me at a certain time, um, I at least now know that um, that doesn't mean the exact time. Um, it might, they might not even show up. Um, I used to get incredibly angry and, um, but just time and having experience um, and now understanding um, that people are not as literal as, um, as I am um, has, has helped quite a bit. Um, what I what I do try to do um, is that I try to have some kind of a, a backup plan. Um, like if I am supposed to maybe have plans with somebody, um, I always kind of have, it still throws my day, but if I have something that um, I kind of have, have planned out to do, if, um, if my original plans fall through, um, that's, that's really helpful. Um, I, like I'm sure many of you, I've taken some hard blows during this um, pandemic um, in a lot of different ways, um, but employment has also been, been one of them. And, um, but you know, we kind of live in, in an all or nothing world. And um, I recently, um, through the interview process, had someone, um, you know, telling me, oh, they, you know, they love me, they would you know, get back to me and, you know, let me know their, their decision no later than, um, you know, whatever day it was. And um, they didn't. And I tried to keep perspective, um, but I had um, another opportunity as well. And um, 
I tried to give them a couple days and, um, you know, so I, I went with, with another opportunity later. They, they did call me back and um, did offer me a position. Um, but uh, my, my mind just went immediately to the, to the negative that they, they didn't like me or whatever it was. Um, but I was able to take advantage of another opportunity. And again, just having a, a backup plan really, um, really helped. And for those of you who are not on the spectrum, uh, obviously we're all very different, um, but to help those of us who, who are literal, um, try to remember your words. And if you tell somebody you're going to get back to them, you know, maybe the next day and you know that you're not going to be able to, or you don't, or you forget, let the person know what happened or let them know what um what they can expect that all I know that that really helps me and um helps my emotions as well uh okay so the the next the next lesson um girls can be mighty fine actresses females are general generally better at role playing than males and because we want to please and fit in Mimicking our peers, role models, or even television personalities is fairly common. I still observe those around me, always in search of that seemingly elusive wisdom, which will help me to better navigate the neurotypical world. Um, so this is kind of, you know, uh, a mixed, a mixed kind of quality to, to have. It's good to be able to, you know, try to blend in and, um, you know, get along and, and fit in, um, which is also, you know, now referred to as, as masking. And guys, no offense, you certainly, you know, do it too. But I, I think part of the reason that um, females are missed more than others is um, we generally um, are a little better. We generally want to please a little more and are a little bit better at, um, communication and just kind of, um, uh, I guess, blending in. Um, but we also, this, this causes us to get missed a lot um, and not receive the help that, that we need. It also causes us to um, have people really not understand um, the, the effort that we're, that we're making um, and just how, how difficult things actually are and that, that we do need help, that we, we do need support. And sometimes when you, you have communication skills, um, uh, you still might not be able to communicate um, uh, what somebody needs or, or, or wants to know. And um, the, the expectations are different. Um, so just, just be aware of that. Be aware of that. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had when maybe speaking to parents of um, children or whoever who um, maybe present differently. Um, well, they, you know, um, they refer to that it's, it's easier for someone like me. But what they really don't know is, is what's going on underneath the surface and how I fall apart at the end of every day and just how much effort it takes to, um, to get up in the morning and to get ready to face the world, uh, the social component, all the, I have a lot of sensory um, sensitivities, uh, you know, so whether it be the, the loudness or touch, um, uh, again, it don't, don't make don't make assumptions and um for all of you who who are very good at masking again be careful because it's it's good to compromise it's good to meet people in the middle but you also don't want to lose yourself um just because we're different it doesn't mean that we're wrong it doesn't mean that you have to change who you are or hide who you are again different um doesn't doesn't mean wrong. Um, okay, um, so the the next lesson is lesson number thirty nine. Change is devastating for an Aspie. 
Many people do not like change, but for a person with Asperger's syndrome, its effect goes much deeper than that. Even something as seemingly simple as new carpet in our home rocks our very core, adding another element of instability and distrust to the unpredictable world in which we live. Um, so there's a story from my childhood that I kind of like to, to tell to demonstrate um, just how devastating um, change is, change can be, um, and how, how literal we are. So um, I have a sister, and um, when we were growing up, we, we share the room, and um, we had this yellow carpeting in the room, and uh, at one point, um, one of us got sick and vomited on the carpeting, and um, it left a stain. So at some point, um, as we got a little bit older, uh, my parents decided to give um, us our own rooms. And um, I was, I was, you know, I was going to be staying in the room with the yellow carpeting. Well, my parents had good intentions. Um, and again, you know, remember that we didn't know anything about autism or, or myself. And um, they told me that um, they were going to get new carpeting for the room. Well, um, I was I was absolutely less than pleased. Um, and you know, you think, well, you know, you're getting something new. Well, new isn't isn't what I wanted. Um, you know, again, that that was change, and that was devastating. And um, I got upset. I um, they would call the a, a, temper tantrum, but um, it really wasn't a temper tantrum. I was, I was just devastated. You know, um, the world is just so unpredictable. I had to deal with the world um, every day going to school, but I, I would know that, you know, coming home, um, you know, I would have my, my yellow carpeting, that, that would be the same, and they were taking that away. Um, in addition to that, um, you know, to try to appease me, uh, they told me that, well, I could go to the store with them and I could pick out any carpeting that I wanted. Um, so I don't know what that means to you, but to me, that means anything I chose out, anything that I want. Well, it, again, I was a child. I, you know, I, despite what people thought, I'd never been a devious kind of, kind of person. And, um, uh, Sorry, I, <laughs> I'm reading your comment. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, anyway, um, we, um, so we went to the store and I found this absolutely beautiful white carpeting. And keep in mind, I'm about seven. So, you know, I just knew it was white, it was soft, and that was what I wanted. And um, so I picked it out and my parents just looked at me with this expression like, no way and they wouldn't let me get it. And so, you know, the tears came again and I, I, I was just devastated. But again, I, you know, I've never been, been an, an actress. Um, they told me any carpeting that I wanted. And if I had to lose my yellow carpeting, I wanted that soft white carpet. So um, <laughs> as you can imagine, um, that was pretty difficult and they thought I was just being a brat. I didn't understand why they wanted to, to do that to me. Um, but so that's, that's how it was. And I, I think, um, you know, sometimes what people don't understand is sometimes it's, it's the little things that, that are kind of our boulders, that are kind of our, our rocks. Um, people, you know, will want to say, well, you went into the Peace Corps, you, you know, left the country, you went to a different culture, new language. Well, how could, you know, if you don't like change, how can you do that? Well, for me, um, again, running's been a, a part of my life for a very long time, and that's how I start my day. Um, I took the things that were, um, that are routine for me and that, you know, I know are always there for me. And I had my running shoes and I went running every day. And what people also didn't realize is while, you know, maybe it's a, quote unquote, foreign, foreign country, um, I wasn't expected to, 
completely understand the culture or fit in or understand the language or communicate fluently. Um, but that's how I'm expected to fit in here. And even though this is my country, I am a US citizen and um, you know, born in, in Michigan, um, is still kind of a, a foreigner in, in my own world. Um, so in some ways, um, it, you know, moving to a, a new country um, wasn't that different. Um, I know I need to move on and, and I'm going to, but I just want to show you one, one other thing. So I think you saw the, the cover of my first book. Um, but my, my publishers, um, they actually have a son who is on the autism spectrum. And so they, they understand, um, some of it, and especially with working with me as an author, um, you know, they kind of learn, you know, learn more, although it was with my first book, it was still pretty early. Um, but maybe, uh, a year or so after, um, we published my book, um, they decided um, that they wanted to kind of change the series a little bit and um, have their authors personalize the covers. Um, and so this is my original cover. And it's kind of like the template of what um, all of the books uh, look like in, in the series. Um, uh, different colors um, authors got, got to choose. Um, but so they, uh, thankfully they, they sent me an email, which email for me has been a wonderful thing because, um, I can, as long as I don't hit send, I can react and get upset and pout and <laughs> do, do everything I need to do to cope and then kind of get through my devastation and try to gain focus and, you know, understand, okay, um, I can make this work. So. Um, they, they gave me lots of notice, um, and I, um, I let them know I wasn't thrilled, but, um, again, I, I have a say in how my, how my book would look, and, um, I'm, I'm happy with my new cover. I, I still, I still mourn my old one a little bit, but, um, but I've learned that change doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, so, okay, moving on, uh, to lesson. 42. The rules are endless and inconsistent. Socializing is difficult, but the ever-changing precedence for appropriate behavior relevant to individual people and situations is nightmarish for Aspies, especially considering neurotypicals do not always follow their own rules. When possible, seek counsel of a real friend willing to patiently explain per perplexing situations and not embarrass you when goofs happen. So we're all going to make mistakes, but for those of you who are not on the spectrum and have someone you, you support, um, if they, if they do make a, make a mistake, um, you know, they, they don't need to be shamed or, or embarrassed, but, you know, try to help them understand what the mistake is. Um, you know, you don't have to make it obvious exactly right in the moment, but don't wait too much longer after, because I know that I have in the past and still, um, offend people, um, offended people, um, been misunderstood and really have no idea why. Uh, and if it's told to me later, um, it, you know, pretty much isn't going to, going to make uh, a whole, a whole lot of sense. And for those of you who, who are on the spectrum, um, you know, just learn from your experiences. Um, try to, I know I try to treat people, um, like I would like to be treated with a little bit of a, a grain of salt, you know, even work your, um, that's kind of a confusing one because I, always learn that um, you're supposed to say hello to somebody and goodbye to people and whether at work or a social situation, uh, people just don't do that. But also at work, I, you know, it was always my impression that you go to work, you greet your coworkers and you get to work. Um, and there are always rules that say, well, you know, if you're seen, you know, 
spending too much time socializing, there will be, uh, you know, punishment or things like that. And then you see your boss um, spending 15 minutes just chatting away. And so that that is all very, very confusing. And, um, you know, keep in mind, things are very relative. Again, uh, different is not wrong. Um, you know, think about, think about the handshake. Uh, you know, you're supposed to shake hands when you meet somebody or in a professional situation. Well, I know for someone like me who has a lot of trouble with, with touch, um, that's just not something that I'm comfortable doing. And I'm also a very genuine person. And if I don't feel like, you know, it's right that I want to shake somebody's hands, um, I, I don't. And, you know, so for whatever, whatever reason why you might not want to give somebody a hug or a kiss or, or a handshake, um, it should be respected. And think about it now with the pandemic. How many, how many strangers, how many, you know, colleagues you don't know, or, you know, are you going to even, even, you know, with maybe distant family members now, you know, and, and friends you know, who, who you want to trust. Um, now, you know, the, the handshake, oh, I, you know, we, we have to be respectful of the, of the virus of the pandemic, but just kind of think about it now, all of a sudden the rules have changed. How, how confusing is that? But also, you know, again, think about it, that just because our ways might be different, they're not necessarily wrong. So, okay, um, so the, the next lesson, Lesson number 51. And this is this is kind of a big one that um, if you get anything out of my presentation, um, which I, I really hope you do and are, um, really remember this one, never say never, anything is possible. Years ago when I began running races, being in the mere presence of others was a feat. A successful conversation, even a simple hello came next. Recognition followed, and now the running community embraces me. I am still awkward, if less so, and easily overwhelmed, but grateful for the acceptance and kindness bestowed, which I never thought possible. Um, truly, this is a common theme in my life. There are so many things that um, I just didn't think that I would ever be able to cope with or manage, and I, I remember the first time that I went to a race and I, I still get overwhelmed very quickly, but just, I love to run and I do love to compete. Um, and I truly believe it's important to, um, to get ourselves out get there. I'm sorry. Would you stop it. What? Oh, uh, and do things that are, that are hard. Um, uh, and, and I, I remember that, that first race just being overwhelmed by, by all, the, all the people there. Um, but again, it's, it's evolved into some wonderful friendships. And, you know, again, never say never. If you told me that one day I would not only be an author, but have published three books, um, have people actually... Um, want to come and get up early on a Saturday morning, come and listen to me, um, I would have told you that you're nuts. Um, so never rule out anything, even if it's something that you can't handle today or don't feel you want to do. Um, I certainly never, I didn't even know 100 mile races existed. Uh, it's certainly not ever, when I did learn about them, it wasn't anything that I had a desire to do. And um, I can't tell you exactly why, but one day I, you know, kind of woke up and it became a, I thought it was a good idea. And um, even after running the, the first one, I have run two more and don't plan on stopping there. So, okay, um, lesson number 57. We get overexcited sharing our passions. Females especially are often able to hide social awkwardness under the guise of being shy, except when speaking of our all-consuming passions, generally more conventional than our male counterparts. Slow to notice disengagement of our audience, 
we are labeled self-centered when candor would be appreciated to help us understand and fix our shortcomings. Again, um, not being great at eye contact or body language, um, it's, it's often hard for, and just because we get so overexcited, we're not meaning to be self-centered. Um, we, uh, you know, we're not able to recognize or forget to kind of um, take on someone else's perspective and, um, you know, try to read those lines. Are people still listening to me? Um, so again, if you have someone who you're supporting, don't embarrass them, don't shame them, but gently, you know, try to, um, try to tell them what happened. And maybe if you're going to be with them another time, set up some cues, practice, help them understand kind of what to look for. And those of you who are on the spectrum who who struggle with this a bit um you know try to um take a look a little bit and see if you know if people's eyes are still you know on you somewhere whether eye contact or not or if they're tapping their foot or you know if it seems like they're still listening and i a lot of my life is kind of based on the whole less is more theory and um you know always try to you know you can cut yourself short and, um, you know, just kind of, if, if people want to know more, they'll, um, they'll, they'll let you know. Um, but otherwise, you know, share a little bit and, you know, let them show their interest and try to show your interest in, in others. Um, okay. So the next lesson, uh, Careless words can endure a lifetime. Similar to teasing, Aspies comprehend words literally. I have never forgotten harsh words directed at me as a child and throughout my life. Neurotypicals are better equipped to dismiss thoughtless words and angry rants, but Aspies internalize it, leading to years of hurt, broken relationships, and destroyed self-confidence. For me, time has dulled the pains, though the scars remain. Um, yeah, that's kind of been um, central in my life and very much um, growing up before uh, we knew about autism. Um, my, uh, my father and my sister teased me relentlessly. Um, and while they, you know, while they might have had the, the best intentions, um, there, there was a lot of hurt. And again, I grew up with... Um, without any confidence at all. And I, I remember too, um, my mom doesn't remember it, but I remember she was very frustrated with me one day. And she told me that um, if, if I didn't change, um, then I would, um, no one would ever want to be with me and I would be alone for the rest of my life. And that, um, that really stuck, stuck with me, um, you know, created a lot of fear, a lot of self-doubt. Um, and it's, you know, it's a process to kind of keep moving forward. And we've, we've talked about that since kind of think that was in preparation for um, this newest book that I have. And, and she, she doesn't, she doesn't remember it. Um, she doesn't remember it. She, she says, well, she probably, you know, just said it in um, frustration and that's all well and good. But again, when you're speaking to someone who is a very, very literal mind, um, just understand the damage that that it can do and we on the spectrum need to do the same thing we need to be careful of our words um many of us like myself are very you know honest and and blunt um but you know we we also need to develop some tact and try to develop judgment and you know if somebody is asking us if if they look nice well you know, if they're, if they're going out to uh, a social event and they're dressed in, um, you know, in pajamas, well, yeah, then, you know, then we can let them know that they, you know, need to go change their wardrobe. But if it's just a style that we're not particularly fond of, but they, you know, it's something that they love and own, you know, you don't need to tell them, oh, that's an awful dress or anything like that. So, um, okay, uh, lesson number 94. Advice is optional, not an obligation. No matter how well-intentioned, never be coerced into following unwanted advice of others. Experiences taught my literal mind that what may work for the majority rarely benefits me. 
I had learned to express appreciation for suggestion, suggestions, consider the options, and follow my instincts as to what will best honor my personal needs and desires. So yeah, um, just keep really, really keep that in mind for those you support, um, as well as those on the spectrum. Um, you know, you can offer perspective and advice, but just know that um, the person themselves um, knows knows themselves best. And if a mistake is going to happen, they need to they need to be the ones who who make it and own it and and learn from it. Um, I have a friend, uh, a running friend, and I have a lot of trouble. It it gets pretty cold here in Michigan, and I just have extra trouble with the. Um, with the cold weather and she would always tell me that I was overdressing, overdressing. And um, so I would, I would try for a number of years wearing less and I, I just froze and it, it was a process, but I finally found some gear that would, you know, where I, I didn't hate to go run in the, you know, 20 degree weather, 10 degree weather, negative degree weather. And people look at me when I'm out running and they, they, you know, I look like the abominable snowman to them. And they're like, how can you wear so many clothes? But again, bodies, you know, we're all very different. We all have different needs. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to listen to advice um, and consider it and apply what is relevant for you and try some things. But um, in the end, uh, it's important for us to make the decisions that are best for ourselves. And... The last lesson I have for you today is remember that others face challenges too. No matter how difficult ASPE challenges are, we must remember that neurotypicals face their own obstacles and demons. Different, but likely no less daunting. It would behoove us all to check any and all self-pity at the door and alternatively sympathize with help and learn from our neighbors. So, you know, it's, it's so easy and obviously for, for me as well to, you know, think the grass is always, always greener, you know, think that somebody has a better life, think that things are, are easy for somebody, the same way that some people um, assume that I'm not struggling with autism or that I struggle less than somebody who, who can't speak or who has, um, and it's, it's just, um, I, I, don't, I don't know that I know anybody who um, doesn't struggle with something, doesn't have some kind of challenge. And, um, you know, it's, it's all relative and we need to, people on the spectrum need to keep in mind that um, we want people to be kind, kind to us. We want them to learn about us and be patient and, you know, help us understand and meet us in the middle and we need to do the same. So again, whether you know, you're know you on the spectrum or a, or a supporter, um, again, different is not wrong. Um, we just need to have compassion as, as people and not, not react with, with fear um, of what is, what is different than us, you know, try to, Try to help others when, when you can and try to learn and, and understand. Um, so I, um, I, I'm hoping that you all have uh, enjoyed my presentation. If there are questions, um, I want to answer them. Um, but just kind of um, some, some, final, some final thoughts um, that I, I very much um, want to share. Um, Again, at least for myself, um, you know, you certainly want to be be humble, but but believe in yourself. Um, don't let don't let doubters dis dissuade you um, from doing things that you want to do. And supporters, um, you know, uh, give give the people who you're you're supporting confidence. Believe in them, and you know, if if they if they don't completely succeed, well, you know. We all need to be willing to make mistakes. Mistakes really aren't failure. Um, it, we learn from our mistakes. Um, it's, it's really those who aren't willing to try uh, that, that, are, that are failures um, because it's so easy just to you know, sit in a corner, um, but we don't learn that way, we don't grow. I can tell you that um, when I 
Um, and it was, it was a process I, I went through to make the decision. But when I decided to write my first book, and um, again, I've been supporting my parents' health for a while now, just out of respect, I, I told them what I was doing. And my dad kind of rolled his eyes at me and um, said to me that, um, well, um, if I was writing it for myself, that was fine, but um, don't plan on anybody, um, anybody buying it. Um, or having any interest in it. And um, that really hurt. Um, and again, I, you know, I don't have a lot of confidence. It's, it's a process, but I am a very stubborn person. And um, I had already made my decision. And, um, you know, he's changed his tune since, but um, I have, between my three books, um, I've now sold, it's not a big number for, for most authors, but I've sold over 2000 books. And crazy enough, um, you know, the powers of the internet, um, I have sold books not only in countries like Canada and Australia and the UK, but countries I've never even heard about um, in countries like, you know, fr uh, France and Spain and, um, again, some of the um, Botswana. <laughs> um, so there, there is, again, don't, don't let people... Um, uh, make you lose confidence in yourself. Um, and another thing I, I want people to understand is it's, it's really not what you do, it's how you do it. Um, I've always been one to want to help people. And um, while I might not be one to, to change the world, um, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, whatever I can do to make a difference in somebody's life. And I Again, I'm helping somebody out there. Um, I hope I'm helping some, some of you out there. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's good with me. Um, and just one, one more thing I, I thought I wanna leave you with. Um, you know, there's so much, um, especially for people on the spectrum, it's just very, very scary out there. Um, it's okay to, to be scared to try new things or to, you know, to do different things. But I, uh, I remember there's someone I used to train with and um, I had been running for a while and I was kind of contemplating whether or not I was going to um, enter a hundred mile race if I was gonna try it. And I was going back and forth and he just kind of looked at me and he was like, what are you waiting for? And you know, it's, it's really true. If there's something that you really want to do, just go for it. Um, you know, whether or not you, I, I don't like the word, you know, with fail, but whether or not you exceed in full, um, it, it really doesn't matter because, you know, you, you make that attempt and you learn and, um, you know, you either continue on or you, or you find a, find a new goal. And sometimes when you try new things or go for something, you realize that, well, maybe what you are going for isn't, isn't really what you want to follow through with, but you found something else along the way. So um, just be willing to, to take risks. Again, um, mistakes do not e equal failure. So again, thank you everyone um, who has taken time out on um, Saturday morning to, um, to be present. And um, if I can answer any, any questions at all, um, I am happy to.